Last week I asked your opinion to know what color I should paint my brand new welding rotator. And the most people voted for green. But also some of you voted for black. So I gave it the two colors. But there's still one little thing I have to do. Much better. While I was painting the thing, I was thinking of something. Why should a piece like this one, for example, of course with two centers in it, spin driven by this shaft and not stay blocked by the other center point, the other shaft here? It could well be that the shaft is gonna spin and that my workpiece does not spin because in theory the friction between this point and this center is the same than between this center and this point. So I need to make something here that will provide me more friction. And I think I have exactly what I need. I have a cute little spring here and it fits on this point. If I can manage to fix this brake pad from a car, now luckily my neighbor has a brand new car so this brake pad is not dirty at all, it's a very nice piece of equipment, drill a hole in here that can, this thing can fit over this point and the spring will provide some pressure. Of course, cut off all the... I don't know if my cutting tool has the right angles to cut brake pad, but we'll see what happens. Yep, my friction system idea should be ready to go, but I, I also drilled centers in this thing. When I push hard here on this surface, there is not much friction and this surface is completely rusted and there's a little bit of paint on it. And so this is not a miracle for and also, I have no idea how I can fix this spring on here. Of course, if I weld it, the steel of the spring will be annealed and doesn't work anymore. And then I found another spring that I already installed here. And the end of the spring is very sharp and grabby. So if I take my part that I want to weld up and I push it on the center, here I have way much friction than on my neighbor's car, uh, my uh, brake pad. So I think I will leave it as is for the moment and we'll see if it works. And now it's time to start thinking about making some kind of tailstock. But first I want to show you something. A handful of weeks ago, Mats in the UK, he didn't send me an old collection of uh, counter sinks. And I don't have the right drill bit for this small diameter. And so what he did, he sent me all the drill bits that go with the countersinks. And also he sent me 
cute little 3 mm M3 tap set. These are quality tools. It's even marked on it. I already have a M3 tap that I had to buy in a set on Amazon. So this uh, not good taps will be now replaced by these very good taps. And he also sent me some kind of primitive tool that he set himself. And this is a very nice one. It's very fine teeth. Ideal file for deburring, for example. So Matt's in the UK again. I have no idea how to thank you for all this. But uh, thank you very much. Oh, and I almost forgot, he also sends me a train and a pizza. All right, let's cut. That could work. The idea is of course to weld this thing here on this movable base, more or less like this, and then make a center point on center height. But I think it should be better if I make it a little bit like a life center. I have a nice little piece of something here. And if I turn these uh, dimensions down, so I can put on these little bearings. I have a small one and an even smaller one. So these two bearings will hold the center point. And this assembly will be held in place inside this bolt. And the bolt, of course, will move left and right because I'm gonna weld this nut on top here and so I can adjust the center. Let's do this. That's good.
I had a little bit difficulties to assemble the thing. And then I took it back to the lathe and cleaned these openings up with a little bit of sandpaper. And now it is assembled. But it doesn't spin anymore. Of course it's a little bit pointless to have a life center that's dead. And because the thing is pressed together, officially I cannot take it apart without making a big mess out of it. But I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put it here in the vise and pinch it and make a mess. As you can see I have it apart and I think I found the problem. This outer ring of the bearing is broken. So instead of having a bearing now I have parts. But that's not a problem. As you can see here I reassembled the thing with only one bearing and it seems to spin freely. So success. As you can see the whole thing is finished and assembled and I even installed a workpiece in here. I turned down a little bit the outer diameter to make it round again because this became oval. And I think I'm ready to start welding. Yes. The problem is that I don't really see what I'm doing. That was fun. I installed the thing back in the lathe. Normally I wanted to do just the part and then stop so you can see the difference. But it was so much fun to do that I did the whole length. I just gave it a touch of uh, hairbrush here to clean it up. And the first part I welded from below here, almost more or less 90 degrees. And I couldn't see very well what I was doing. Result, this weld looked like nothing. And then I started welding on top and I see much better what I'm doing. And this weld look really good. Now, remember this is the very first time in my life I'm doing something like this. Right, let's turn the diameter down again to 40 millimeters. What it should be. Forty. Conclusion. As maybe you can see, there are a few spots that I need to re-weld up again. But I filled here for the moment four millimeter in one pass, and I think that's a lot. So rebuilding this will be no problem at all. My thoughts about this build. First of all, it was fun to do. I had a really good time building this. My ground clamp for the welding system here works perfectly fine. No problem at all. And I'm really glad I did not make a, 
the rest for my arm. For the moment I use this made in Germany clamp because welding at 90 degrees I don't really see well what I'm doing. It works better for me if I weld at what 180 degrees on top. Maybe there could be one little problem that I didn't have yet but I'm sure one day it will. If my part is not really squeezed between the two centers. My spring here for the moment works perfectly fine. will push the part against this center. But the electrical contact for welding instead of passing to this center point will pass to the spring. And this spring I'm pretty sure can stand it. But in the meanwhile, this thing will have to do. Total cost for the whole thing 22 euros to buy this uh, speed control. All the other parts are all leftovers and recycled and so for free. And if you think the thing looks a bit like a wood lathe, You're absolutely right, because that was in fact my first plan, buy uh, an old mini lathe for example and then change the motor to put a very slow spinning thing in it. I couldn't find an old mini lathe and then I was looking for a wood lathe. Total price between 400 and 2000 and I don't know what euros. And for that price, of course, I have to start transforming, switching the motor out. A brand new one you can buy for 150, 180. So a brand new wood lathe is much cheaper than, for example, a second hand one on Facebook Marketplace. Sounds stupid, but it's true. So I decided to build everything myself and here is the result and it works.